Hi and welcome to Bits from my personal collection, the show where I dig into the time, the developers, and the technology behind some of the items in my collection. Today we'll be taking a look at how Microsoft in the late 70s with its new consumer products division went mainstream and published its first line of computer games. In the late 70s Microsoft was a serious player in the microcomputer industry. Having built a strong business upon the initial MITS Altair Basic, Microsoft's first ever product. Microsoft would end up being the go-to company for microcomputer basic implementation and provided the TRS-80 Level 2 Basic, the Basic and the Commodore PET, and for the Apple II Plus. Microsoft had also expanded into other high-level programming languages, producing the first implementations of Fortran and COBOL to appear on microcomputers. Microsoft wasn't exactly known as a brand for the average home computer user. But that would change in 1979, when they decided to launch the Microsoft Consumer Products Division to expand into more mainstream areas of the home computer. Their first product was a game called Microsoft Adventure, an implementation of the mainframe game Colossal Cave. Originally written in Fortran on a DEC PDP-10 mainframe computer in 1975 by William Crowther, a programmer at Bolt, Baranek and Newman in Boston, Colossal Cave, or simply Adventure as it was originally called, is considered to be the first ever computer text adventure game. With text commands, you would control the player around a mysterious cave, rumored to be filled with treasures and wealth. The game quickly became a success on BBN's PDP-10 timesharing mainframe and was released on the ARPANET, the forerunner of the internet the same year. Later in 1977, Colossal Cave was vastly expanded by programmer Don Woods, who had discovered the game on the ARPANET while working at the Stanford AI lab. Woods contacted Crowther who gave his permission for Woods to expand the game to encompass more than double the number of rooms and puzzles and transform it into a loose fantasy world. Woods and Crowther can thus, in a sense, be considered some of the progenitors of the entire genre of computer adventure games and interactive fiction. Colossal Cave directly inspired the creation of the adventure game genre. Games as Adventureland by Scott Adams, Zork by Infocom, and Mystery House by Ken and Roberta Williams of Online Systems were all directly influenced by Colossal Cave. And as history would show, all of these companies would go on to become key innovators in the early home computer adventure game genre. Besides the direct influence on the computer adventure game, Colossal Cave Adventure spawned numerous implementation early on and can today be seen as one of gaming history's most influential titles. Microsoft originally published Microsoft Adventure in 1979 for the TRS-80 and the Apple II home computers. It was a direct implementation of the PDP-10 mainframe game. Microsoft Adventure wasn't developed internally at Microsoft, but on the side by Microsoft employee and programmer James Gordon Letwin. Letwin had earlier ported Colossal Cave to the Heathkit computer and was one of the 11 original employees from the iconic staff portrait taken in Albuquerque in 1978 before Microsoft moved to the Pacific Northwest. Letwin managed to convince Bill Gates and Paul Allen to sign Microsoft on as the publisher. Letwin's one-man company Softwin Associates was listed as the developer. Neither Will Crowther, who initially wrote Colossal Cave, or Don Woods, who expanded upon it, were mentioned anywhere on the package or in the game. While plenty of other companies had attempted to port the full mainframe game to the personal computer before Microsoft, no one had been successful getting it running in all of its 300 kilobyte glory. To make the game run on Radio Shack's TRS-80, Letwin decided to make use of Radio Shack's $500 expansion drive, which allowed the computer to read floppies instead of cassettes, and thereby expanding the amount of data that was possible to pack onto the media. Letwin managed to pack the entire game onto a single floppy. Given that Microsoft was one of the few software companies with the resources to give its products a professional packaging, Microsoft Adventure would become one of the very first computer games to be released in a box. Only years later as the game industry grew more professional and profitable would this become the standard. In 1981, while a new pay-per-view channel would come to redefine how we all would experience music, Big Blue released the IBM 5150, also known as the original IBM PC. Arriving late to the game nobody foresaw that this computer would in a decade dominate the personal computer market, having eradicated almost all other computer architectures along the way. 
IBM included Microsoft Adventure as the only game in the initial software release for the IBM PC in 1981, and is regarded as the very first commercial game available for the new system. And in typically IBM fashion, the packaging was neutral, boring and very much corporate-like. Two different versions of packaging exist, while both iterations contain exactly the same 1.0 game version, the title on the covers says Microsoft Adventure on one and Adventure by Microsoft on the other. IBM carried on the tradition of releasing all of its earliest games and entertainment software titles in this bland gray folder. Microsoft Adventure, while being an achievement at the time, the original 1979 release didn't achieve much success. The nature of the text-only adventure genre was indeed for the few. The masses wanted fast-paced graphical action games. The IBM release of Microsoft Adventure in 1981 was much more successful. This could somewhat sound strange, since technology already had moved away from text-only games to full graphic. But the IBM PC was foremost a business machine and wasn't intended for games, especially not fast-paced action titles. So in a sense, Microsoft Adventure was probably the best marriage for the new IBM PC. In 1980 Microsoft would release Olympic Decathlon, the only other game to be published for the Apple II and TRS-80 personal computers. From here on up Microsoft would, like with its disk operating system MS-DOS, put all of its eggs in the IBM PC and compatibles basket. And over the course of the next decade, have great success with its line of flight simulators. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter or visit my blog at retro365.blog where I post new articles every month.